1643, this county was fought over vigorously by Parliament um, and the King. And the uh, Marquis of Newcastle had swept down with a huge army to try and capture the county. He didn't succeed in capturing all of it. He has to stop short of the Parliament-held town of Boston. But Bolingbroke here was one of his outposts, an important outpost. And when the parliamentarians counterattacked, this was their first target. Now this brought on a major battle because outnumbered 30 to 1 here, the garrison sought help from Newark and Lincoln, where the royalist garrisons were strong. So the troops marched out and they clashed just up the road at Winsby on the 11th of October. It only lasted 20 minutes, but it was an incredibly decisive battle because the royalists were routed and, and totally destroyed as a fighting force and, and fled back the way they came. And the whole of Lincoln, and Lincolnshire, Newark, all the main um, areas were soon to fall to Parliament as a result of this. So why were the Parliament forces here? Because the royalists were trapped in Bolingbroke Castle and the Royalist forces having been gathered from Lincoln and beyond were on their way they hoped to relieve the siege of Bolingbroke so gradually the Royalist forces appeared over the hill and there in front of them were all the Parliament cavalry arrayed so facing each other we had on the left flank of the Royalists, Sir John Henderson, and the centre and the right flank led by Sir William Saville. And facing them, waiting to commence the battle, were the Parliament forces led by Fairfax and Cromwell. Fire! Short, decisive was the fray on Winsby Field that battle day. And that's exactly what it was. Because this battle claimed the whole of Lincolnshire for Parliament. Winsby was a very decisive battle, but it's not actually very well known because it was early on in the war and in, and in terms of numbers it was very small compared with, say, Marsden Moore and Naseby. But it was significant in so much as it led to the complete capitulation of a county. And also, it was Oliver Cromwell's first major battle, and he was nearly killed in it. So if he'd been killed in that battle, then history would have been very different. As it was, he escaped with a few grazes and went on to become well, the head of, of, of the protectorate. Yes, it's very unusual to be able to do a commemoration of a great battle on the exact spot, on the exact day, at the exact hour. In fact, I can think of the number of times in my career fingers on one hand. So it actually did put a tingle up people's spines, particularly the reenactors that were standing there, because they knew they were standing on the exact spot. And we laid a wreath and we scattered rosemary for remembrance of the troops that fell there. And that was a very significant thing to do, we think. Rosemary is the traditional herb for remembrance in the 17th century. And uh, a lot of soldiers died in that battle, at least 300 and maybe many hundreds more. And so what we did was to get our cavalry troopers to, to scatter the rosemary over the field to remember the, the soldiers that fell there. This is a royalist garrison. We are uh, the garrison of Old Bolingbroke Castle. And we've heard of a serious problem which has befallen our cavalry force at a place called Winsby. And we believe that we are now invested by a large force of parliamentarian rebel soldiers and we do not have a large amount of supplies in the castle, so we cannot hold out for long. What you can see in the garrison is the normal activity which has to take place inside a beleaguered fortress. We have uh, a blacksmith mending equipment, we have sutlers providing food, uh, we even have a, a surgeon which is very fortunate because some of the hurt which our soldiers have suffered may be mended by this very skilled man. Well, we only have 200 in the garrison. I don't believe the rebels know that, but I've heard their numbers may be as many as 6,000. Uh, the walls of the castle are somewhat broken down, but we have reinforced them in part. We're running out of barrels of powder and shot, 
So our musketeers must choose their aim and pick off their enemy. We cannot uh, demonstrate, we must actually inflict casualties. But we do have two pieces which are firing uh, shot, uh, canister shot at the enemy, but this means they must get closer to us. I am Sir Master Gunner Jackson and I hold the guns of this garrison for good King Charles. It's my job in this garrison to make sure that these guns are well equipped, have plenty of powder, plenty of ball and case shot. These guns are to effect on the rebels the maximum depth that we can to stop them advancing on this garrison. We will fire on them ball, we'll fire on them chain shot, and hopefully we'll be able with our chain shot to take out the legs of their horse. I have made sure that there is good gun platforms for my guns so they're well elevated in the walls so that they can rain down their thunder on the enemy. We also have today, sir, in the garrison, a number of smaller guns which I will send out onto the earthworks in front of the castle as an advanced force to repel the rebels. We are well equipped, sir, and we hope that we'd be able to repel them and send them where they belong. The gunner was a very important person, the production of ordnance was a very important person. They knew their field piece, they knew its fits and foibles, very much like, you know, an old car, the character and everything that follows. Charge. And you would just get used to it. You, you would learn as you go along. A gun crew would stay with their particular gun. You wouldn't have somebody coming and going. Because you get to know your gun, you would stay with it. What? Also, the artillery in the 17th century were mostly mercenary. So you would find that unless we were paid, when that lot out there comes storming in here, we might change sides. If you've looked after us, we can be very, very lax on our loading and it can take us ages to actually load and turn the gun around and fire on the retreating soldiers. But if they've treated us badly and they haven't paid us, watch out because we can't half move. <laughs> The parliamentarians, as you would put them, are in fact rebels against His Majesty's cause. This war has been an unnecessary war and has been brought upon us by rebellious subjects who must be subdued and brought to book. I am a gentleman. He is a gentleman. We are both Englishmen. We are at war. He believes that the King should be paramount. I believe that Parliament should rule with the King. I believe that the King is under the influence of evil councillors. I am loyal to the King. I am also fighting for the King. I am fighting for God, King and Parliament. But I believe it should be that those together, the, 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 the Parliament with the King ruling the country, not... And, and that's where I take issue with him. He is a gentleman. He is a fellow Englishman. I do not wish to take his life, but I do want to make it clear that we believe that the parliamentarian cause w must must triumph and that the king must rule with parliament. I come forth to summon this castle. May I speak to the garrison commander? introduce myself. My name is Major Knight of Colonel Hobart's regiment. Yeah. May I inform you that at the moment this castle is surrounded by 1,200 soldiers of Colonel Hobart's regiment. And may I also inform you that the Earl of Manchester, complete with the forces of the Parliament's Eastern Association, are on their way here at the, as I speak. Your position is undefendable and to save the effusion of English blood I would ask you to give up this stronghold and give, it to the, give over to the forces of Parliament that have been raised to defend this kingdom in this time of great need. So we have the, a rebel claiming that we are surrounded. Please give him his response. Sir, I see you come with an armed force. I warn you that bugbear words will not win castles or make us quit this place. You are surrounded by 1,200 foot soldiers of Colonel Hobart's regiment. If needs be, we will take this place by storm. 
So when I ask you, I would plead with you to surrender this place now to save any effusion of unwanted and unnecessary blood. Ah, your words are many, mine shall be few. My walls are stout, my men are strong, and my cause is sealed in my heart. I serve a Christian prince who harms no man, but lives for a law of king, parliament, as was in good Queen Bess's time. You, sir, you bring treason and rebellion. So get thee gone, for if you stay in front of these castles, sir, I shall shoot you down like a dog that you are. And if that is your final word, we will be about our business. Good day, I sir. Ten Parliament at Westminster. The true Parliament is with the King in Oxford. Now get thee gone, sir. We will, and we will see you again on the field of battle. The King of the Lord! The Church of the Lord! The Church of the Lord! Charles, King of England! Charles, King of England! Charles, King of England. They came uh, to imperiously invite us to leave His Majesty's garrison, and that we will not do. Uh, we are here to defend this particular garrison, and we will do that even to the last drop of our blood. I came up here and took, uh, tried to summons the castle this morning, asked for their surrender, offered them terms so that when they surrendered the castle, they, they could march out of here with, without... Um, with dignity without losing any life and, that, and that's how all sieges would have begun somebody would have offered the, the garrison inside the, the option to get out and if they if they took that option they could usually go with the full honours of war march out with their drums and colours and they'd go off somewhere else on the other hand if they refused we would assault the castle the um the siege of Bollington castle was was a loose siege it wasn't close up the, the castle was ringed by about 6,000 troops. They weren't really very within, uh, very close within musket shot or anything like that. So about 400 yards away, um, directly in a line through the fort to the castle, we've got the Parliamentarian siege lines with one of their siege guns there. And it's firing the occasional pot shot at the castle, as it would have done in 1643, just to wake up the defenders and make them realise that they're penned in. Um, effectively, what the Parliamentarians are saying is, congratulations, Royalists, you've penned yourselves up in the cheapest prison of war camp we can find. You have to be very methodical when you attack a castle like this. So it's been surrounded by 6,000 troops. It's uh, held in such a way that, that no relief can get in and the troops inside can't get out. There's no supplies coming in. So even if they don't manage to take the, the castle by direct assault, they can starve the garrison out eventually. But what they're trying to do this time is to make it short and sharp and take that fort and render the, the site indefensible, forcing the garrison to surrender. <laughs> Now, although um, there was a very decisive battle up the road at Winsby, there was no actual battle here at Bolingbroke. So what we have done is to set out to fight a conjectural battle based on what might have happened here, because we have all the classic ingredients of a, a battlefield here with the, with the castle and the fort. So the first battle we fought was uh, an attempt by the parliamentarians to seize the fort, because if they could get that fort, they could bring up their siege guns and knock the castle walls down.
So the parliamentarians came in, they did manage to storm right into the fort, but the royalists brought up reinforcements in the castle and drove them out again, and the parliamentarians were, were driven back. It's really important for the parliamentarians to, to seize this fort, and that's what they're trying to do now, because they can't get at the castle without taking this earth fort, and the royalists know this, so they're trying to hold on for grim death now. They will fight to the last to hold this fort. If the parliamentarians can get more troops in and hold it this time, they can bring up their siege guns, and it really will be the end of the castle, because a castle with medieval masonry doesn't stand a chance against modern artillery. So it's all about the fort, so the battle is there. They have a choice really, as soon as that fort goes and if they fail to, to counter-attack successfully and take it, they know they've lost the battle. So they can come back into the castle and try and hold out, but if they do refuse to surrender at that stage and the castle is taken, there won't be any mercy shown to them because of the rules of war say so if you, you've refused a chance for surrender, that's it, you're dead. So if they're sensible, they will surrender and they'll be given the full honours of war and marched off to the nearest royalist garrison. Hold your tongues. We have too many souls. We will not have the souls of this garrison taken by you. We will ask for quarter and movement to another garrison. We grant you leave 
leave to do so. You may leave the garrison with the honours of war. I thank you, sir. The surrender went rather well, actually. It took a bit longer than we thought because the parliamentarians came up to, to get the surrender of the, the royalists and the royalists wouldn't surrender at first, so the parliamentarians had to fire their cannon and muskets at them to uh, persuade the royalists that they should surrender, and at which point the royalists felt that perhaps, you know, honour has been satisfied and they could surrender. What happened, obviously, when they accepted our terms, um, the, we, we allowed them to march out with the full honours of war, which meant they could march out with their drums beating and their colours flying. And the musketeers would actually also be allowed to carry musket balls in their mouths, which signified that their guns could be made ready for action, and it's just a, sim, a symbol. So they, they, they marched out, and then we have obviously marched in and taken possession of the castle, and the castle is now, our, now, now ours. And uh, they, they will go, we gave, under the terms that we gave them, they, they would be able to march to another garrison somewhere else and continue to fight for the king. But, but it would have meant that less, not a very few soldiers on both sides from that point um, here would have died. This is where Oliver Cromwell came from. At this time he was a colonel of cavalry, but he was already making a name for himself as a, a very important officer. And also uh, in, in this area operating at the same time was Thomas Fairfax, who was another future uh, Lord General of the Parliamentarian Forces. So, so this, this, this area and what happened here helped to forge the, uh, the Eastern Association troops that later went on to form part of the New Model Army, which was the, the, the army which the, later won the war for the parliamentarian side. Well, we finished off the weekend with a commemoration. It's been a fantastic weekend. It's really gone very well. But uh, we have to remember there really were soldiers that really died in the English Civil War. And just as we did at Winsby, we've laid a wreath here in the Orchester's Tower at Bolingbroke to the soldiers that fought and died here at Bolingbroke. Not many of them did die here, fortunately. It was, it was a minor affair. The, the real bloodbath was up at Winsby. So a few died here. But we were, we'd like to remember them because they had families and names and lives which they lost here, fighting for King or Parliament. So we've laid a wreath. It's been a marvellous weekend, yes. We've been lucky with the weather. Um, just everything's worked fantastically. Oh, it's been a, a brilliant weekend. Um, all the public have really enjoyed the living history in the castle and the parliamentarian living history down the road. And the battle, the main event, was really successful. Um, we had about 4,000 visitors, so it's gone really well. Well, for the Friends of Bolingbroke Castle, it's been a really successful project because um, they've undergone a lot of training to do this kind of event, to put on this kind of event, and it's been really successful for them. Um, from the Friends' point of view, given that we've only been running two years, I think um, to actually have an event as big as this and as successful as this on, and the kind of weather we've had is just superb. Um, where we go from here and to do something like this again, um, I don't know. Um, and I think all the people in the village have got involved. We've had Rotarians involved, um, we've had schools involved, as you know. Um, it's just been absolutely superb. I think it's really good. It's a good educational point for the kids, something that they seem to be getting a lot out of. The people that are here doing the, uh, the acting, it's just, they're, they're wonderful. Yeah, taking such a good part and uh, taking it seriously, really, um, gives you a good insight into how they used to live.